Welcome to video number five. Finally, we are going to do some heat pressing and see the results of all of our work up until this point. So if you've missed videos one through four, check them out. They're in the description box that walks you step by step up into where we are right now. So here's our A sub print and our hammer mill print. Uh, first things first, I like to get rid of a little bit of the extra paper. So I'm going to take my cutter and just trim this photo just a tiny little bit. And I'll do this for both of them. Okay, I just trimmed, I left myself about a quarter of an inch beyond uh, my print. And uh, we've got those ready. Next, let's talk about the fabric because that's very, very important. And if you're a quilter, this is going to blow your mind because we are used to working with cotton fabric, 100% cotton fabric. However, if you make t-shirt quilts or memory quilts out of clothing, then you might be used to working with mixed blends like polyester blends, rayon blends, silky types of fabrics. So this might not be as of a shocker to you uh, working with this type of fabric, but the sublimation process does not work on 100% cotton. Aww. <laughs> uh, we're working with polyester based fabrics for sublimation for the best results okay so there's all kinds of fabrics out there that you can get for sublimation you could do a poly blend with cotton uh, for the best results you're going to want at least 65 percent polyester mixed with your cotton however because there's a little bit of cotton in there you might have some fading now i've experimented experimented with those poly cotton blend fabrics and they're okay i've also experimented with microfiber sheets which give me really great results you might have seen that video here on my channel if not you can go check that out but since then and for the last couple of months i've been using this this is 100 percent polyester white poplin fabric going to put a link to this down in the description box so you can find it and check it out 100% polyester so uh, I like to cut my polyester pieces ahead of time before moving over to the heat press and I like to cut my uh, fabric a little bit bigger than my print so I'm just going to double this it's two layers I'm going to put one of these prints right over top of my fab fabric just like that and I'm going to cut two pieces of this polyester at one time a little bit bigger than my photo so there we go we have two pieces we're going to do two prints today the very next thing we're going to do is, believe it or not, there is lint all over our fabric that we cannot see. So I'm going to take a lint roller and I'm just going to quickly go over both sides of this fabric. You can't see it, but it's there and I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. See those little specks you might pick up from your cutting mat? Any lint on your fabric will affect your transfer when you're sublimating. Now, I don't know if you can see that or not, but there's tiny little specks of lint all over my lint roller. All of that would have affected the way that uh, we get our results. So we've prepped our fabric. The very next thing I like to do, uh, I make a lot of t-shirt quilts and I work with interfacing all the time. This poplin fabric is slinky and uh, without being interfaced, it frays quite easily along the edges. 
Well, I want to add a little bit of stability to it. I also want to increase the opacity of the fabric just a little bit. And, uh, and adding a fusible interfacing to the back side actually makes it a lot easier to work with when sewing into your quilts and other projects. So for that, I use my favorite Pelon P44 uh, fusible interfacing. And we're gonna cut two pieces of this about the same size of our fabric, okay? There's one. I'm just quickly doing this so it's not exact. There's two. And let's put our fabric square on here and we'll trim this up a little bit. like that. So while we've been doing this, I've had the heat press warming up. Uh, let's move over there. I'm going to show you what temperature I have my heat press set at and you can take a look at that. So here we are over at the heat press. I know the window, the lighting might not be fantastic. It's in the afternoon. The light just pours right through there. I have curtains, but I don't want them near the heat press because this thing gets super hot. So with sublimation, we're dealing with a good bit of heat. Today, I'm gonna to be setting my heat press at 400 degrees. You'll see the bottom number right there. Right now, it's at 359 and still warming up. It takes a good hot minute for this bad boy to come to temperature. This is a 16 by 19 heat press from Heat Press Nation. I'll put a link to them down below if you wanna check that out. I also have a 15 by 15 inch heat press over there that I got on Amazon, uh, but I really like the clamshell for sublimation. Uh, 400 degrees, we're going to heat press our photos for 60 seconds. Uh, anywhere between uh, 40 and 60 seconds, you might have to find your happy place for your paper type, your ink type, and the fabric type that you're pressing, right? But this is what I found to give me the best results for the materials I'm using. So while this is warming up, right now we're at about 373 and still warming. We're gonna go ahead and put the interfacing on the back side of our fabric while this continues to heat up. You'll notice I have a piece of parchment paper down on the bottom part of my heat press and I'm going to bring in my interfacing and my fabric. The interfacing is on the back side. The bumpy side is actually facing the fabric and I'm going to just lay this right down on my heat press being very careful because it is hot. It is very hot. And then we're going to cover that with another piece of parchment paper. And we're at 385 now, which is a really good temperature to go ahead and add the interfacing to. And I'm gonna clamp that down for about uh, 20 seconds. Usually if I have several prints to do, I will Go through this phase first. I'll add the interfacing to all of my fabric. And once that's done, then I actually start pressing uh, the photos. All right, there's 20 seconds. We can remove this top sheet. The interfacing is now fused to the back side. One thing about this is everything is extremely hot when it comes off of here, so I have a pair of tweezers. This helps me grab stuff off. We're gonna go ahead and fuse the interfacing to the back side of our second paper, because our fabric, 
because we're doing two prints today one with a sub paper and one with hammer mill paper so that we can compare the results and so you can see what the difference is I'm just lining up the interfacing to the back side of my fabric bumpy side touching the fabric we're going to lay that down and give that a press. We are almost at 400 degrees. Let's press this for 20 seconds. All right, we should be good. I'm gonna remove this one and bring over the cooled off one because this one is very, very hot. <laughs> and we are at 398, so we can go ahead and start setting up for the photo to come in. So, my fabric, I'm going to lay this back down on the heat press. The fabric is up, the interfacing is still on the back side, and we're going to bring in our first photo. This is the photo with the A sub paper. We're going to lay that right down in the center of everything. And you could even use some heat tape to keep everything in place. If you want to, I usually just use a single piece. And now we're at temperature. We're gonna go ahead and cover this and press this for 60 seconds. All right, we're gonna be really careful lifting up the top. We don't really want anything to shift. Uh, moving the print when it's just pressed could cause some ghosting uh, or blurring of our image. So we're just gonna give that a second and then we can take off our parchment paper from the top. Being very careful to handle this. I know the light's coming in there. <laughs> uh, we're going to go ahead and lift off the paper. And there we have our photos. I'm not sure if you can see that very well or not. It's gorgeous. We're going to take it over to uh, the other table here in just a minute when we're done pressing. I'm going to lift this one off. And next, we're going to do the hammer mill copy. So let's put the second fabric down. We will bring in the hammer mill print. And just center that and I'll add a piece of heat tape right there. And we're gonna cover this and press for another 60 seconds. We're lifting this one up. We're going to just give it a second. Uh, one thing I will say, you notice I have my heat press next to a window. <laughs> if you're at the heat press for a good amount of time, it gets really hot. And so I like to open up a window. And not only that, people have asked, is there a smell to this? Sometimes, yes. And I don't particularly notice it when I'm heat pressing a bunch uh, because I'm here and I'm in it. But Harlan has come in the room when I'm sublimating photos and he's been like, wow, it's really smelly in here. So I do have my heat press next to a window and I usually have this fan in the window uh, with the air blowing out, which just sort of helps ventilate the room. Uh, and he says it makes a big difference. So you might want to think about ventilating 
next to your heat press if you're really sensitive to smells. So let's lift off this parchment paper. One thing about the parchment paper is you do want to use a clean sheet in between doing your pressing because you will get ghosting images on your parchment paper that might transfer to other fabrics. We're going to lift off this print. And there is the hammer mill copy. And I'm not sure how much of that you see, but I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to take this print. We're going to do a side by side comparison as we close up this series. So here we are, y'all. This is both prints. I made sure to mark this one as the A sub while this one was pressing so I wouldn't get them mixed up because look, they are almost identical. Now I will say I will give total props to A sub paper. The greens are a little bit richer than the hammer mill paper. The blacks might be a little bit richer and darker. Uh, the blues oh, are almost identical. And the pink might be a little bit richer with the A sub paper, but I'm gonna be really honest with you. This is a fantastic print using the hammer mill paper. So if you're on a budget <laughs> and uh, you're looking at sublimation paper and you're like, wow, uh, there has to be an alternative. I'm gonna tell you, I have been super pleased with the hammer mill paper. You you can't complain about that, but if you're looking for a budget-friendly way to get into sublimation, you might want to consider the hammer mill paper. But that's it, y'all. Once you've pressed and it's cooled down, you're ready to work with it. So uh, I gave myself a little trimming box. I can use my rotary cutter and my ruler and trim both of these up and sew these into a pillow. Uh, I could even quilt these first, which I might end up doing. So I would layer it with some batting, do some simple straight line quilting, and then make it into a pillow. This fabric quilts wonderfully. Um, and even with the interfacing, it is still very soft and uh, it almost feels kind of silky and smooth. I really, really like it. So this is going to finish up this series. If you have any questions, feel free to jump down to the comment section below. Uh, yeah, what do you think? What do you think about the whole process? I know we've spent a lot of time going through and uh, learning about editing the photos to make the colors pop, cropping the photos, adding some text and things like that. But here we are, the results are fantastic. And to be quite honest, I've tried many other products for printing photos on fabric. I've tried many different types of printers before getting into sublimation. And once I dove into sublimation, for me, there is no alternative better than this. And uh, from now on, any photos that go into my quilts or other projects will be done with sublimation. Okay, y'all, I hope y'all found this informative and helpful. I will see y'all soon. Bye, everybody.